Hello and welcome. It's my pleasure to present this session on sales analytics. As it turns out, the single most important metric impacting revenue performance can't be found in any CRM system. So stay tuned and learn more. My name is Lisa Clark from QStream, a Boston-based SaaS solutions company focused exclusively on the human side of sales acceleration. We leverage a perfect storm of mobile science and data to improve the capabilities of your sales reps and managers in just minutes a day. Visit QStream.com to learn more. Before I get started, I wanted to let you know we're actively following social channels during and after this session, so feel free to ask questions or share thoughts at QStream hashtag sales summit. Now, if every sales team has one goal, it's to crank it up. Yet, if you plot the average performance of a sales team, there's a relatively small number of reps that will ever be in the top levels of quota achievement. To change that dynamic, we need to do more than just automate processes. We need to successfully coach and grow the biggest number of individual contributors to reach their goals faster. So rather than just hiring more A players, we need to find a way using data to improve the performance of the salespeople we already have. Even a 5% gain from the middle performers will yield more than 70% more revenue. It's true that having the right metrics will give us a system to help identify and predict sales trends and outcomes and let sales managers know where salespeople can improve most. Both have the same goal, which is to drive revenue. To do this, you need, to access, you need access to the data, a set of metrics, and know how best to collect and evaluate them. Certainly, technology can and does play a big role here in achieving these goals. And for sure, the size of the prize is worth it. According to research from Bain, companies that hone their business metrics will be twice as likely to be in the top quartile of financial performance within their industry, three times more likely to execute decisions as planned, and five times more likely to make decisions faster. For everyone else, it might make you feel better to know you're not alone. Research shows that 4% of companies are really good at managing their sales analytics, so clearly it's early days. The magic really comes with having the right tools, the right data, and the right approach. As sales leaders, we might think the more data we put into the hands of the sales team, the better they'll be able to address this issue. In fact, over the past 20 years with CRM and the automation of the sales force, we've seen a whole lot of reporting, mostly rear view stuff like activity levels, quota attainment, and win rates, all things that once reported have already happened and are too late to impact. Analyzing the past, can only help so much. So the fundamental question is, how should management be using the data adaptively and predictively to impact the future performance of salespeople? The answer to this lies in some compelling research done by one of QStream's partners, Vantage Point, Point Performance. It's highlighted in a book they wrote a few years ago called Cracking the Sales Management Code. Jason Jordan and his partners took hundreds of sales management reports and studied them, trying to understand what was being measured by sales enablement teams and why. A lot of these insights are in the book. Initially, they assumed that by looking at enough Fortune 500 reports and how these companies had optimized their CRM strategies, they would uncover a range of best practices. But what they found instead is that every team kind of approached their sales analytics in a different way, and how each company used these reports differed considerably. So they stepped back and tried to categorize these reports into buckets, which they eventually summarized not into 100, but 300 different types. The question they posed for each one of these metrics is, can I manage you? Is this a metric that I can come in in the morning and actually control or improve? Well, there are some things we just can't manage. There are some we can like the number of prospecting calls. As a manager, if I decide I want my sales force to make more prospecting calls, I can just have my reps make more prospecting calls. I can manage that. There are a number of things, though, that we can not only measure, but also dramatically improve. But we're not. Let's start with a few that you may not have thought of. Believe it or not, many managers don't stop to consider what each of their sales reps are actually prepared to bring to every customer interaction. We're not talking about prescribed steps or rote presentations, but their ability to add value in the client's buying process and the sales cycle itself from first meeting to close. These capabilities can and should be measured and managed proactively. It might not surprise you that great salespeople aren't actually born that way. They're enabled to become the top professionals they are through the benefits of coaching, experimentation, and experiment experience. 
They have a unique ability to create value at every stage of the customer's journey. They provide useful perspectives on how to achieve desired results and help customers make their own best decision. It's just one of the skills that makes them great. It's true that today more than one-third of enterprise sales reps, even those with lots of market and product training, are unable to apply the context needed to successfully sell into their markets. The findings are based on an analysis of nearly a quarter million responses to scenario-based sales challenges delivered by the Qstream platform to sales reps across a range of industries. When you look at the impact of mobile on data collection and analytics, we're still only scratching the surface on ways we can address sales capabilities. Mobile really is a force multiplier. It's hugely powerful in getting people to engage, and it's an easy and convenient way to not only gather great capabilities data, but to reinforce the sales skills that matter most. Here's one that my company offers. It's designed to analyze and synthesize thousands of data points in real time from reps' responses to brief scenario-based challenges. You get some amazing and sometimes unexpected insights on your team's continuous readiness to tackle dynamic market change. Data from systems like this can also help direct resources towards the rep that require additional support. Sales fluency maps can help you keep a pulse on what your reps are prepared to bring to every client interaction. The data also lets you provide a rich set of real-time reports, dashboards, and trends to sales leadership and executive management that help answer important business questions like, do we even have the right people? Using data tags, you can even slice the data to track specific capabilities such as prospecting, competitive differentiation, negotiation skills, and so on. Let's move on to some other metrics likely missing from your sales analytics as well. Starting with coaching effectiveness. Managers surveyed by the Sales Management Association rated coaching as the number one most important activity based on the, its impact to sales effectiveness. They even ranked it higher than lead generation, compensation, and sales methodology. You can see here how closely sales coaching activity correlates with improved performance. Based on their survey data, firms that consistently meet their sales objectives coached 15 to 20 percent more frequently than firms that did not meet their objectives. While it makes sense to prioritize coaching, many sales managers actually do very little of it, never mind measure how effective they are at it. Why is that? Well, according to the same survey, they said they were just too busy. On average, managers spend roughly two days with their individual reps every 8 to 12 weeks. Some also admitted they just didn't have the skills, data, or tools to coach effectively. So if you want to make this a priority, you need to do two things. First, managers need the insights they need to deliver good coaching and not just a checklist of general things they'll probably do when they get around to it. Then measure the effectiveness of that coaching. Many execs are turning to technology for this as well. Things like simple dashboards they can use to identify how to help individuals on their team succeed while maximizing their available time together. Let me show you one. Here's an example of a dashboard that provides a weekly summary to the manager with sales performance data and actionable coaching tips. Last year, my company delivered hundreds of thousands of coaching insights to managers, increasing coaching effectiveness by as much as 55%. The most critical part of this approach is that it effectively engages time-constrained sales managers in the process of coaching. In addition to metrics around coaching, you can see very specific individuals in need of very specific coaching. And onboard communication tools and tips further streamline that process. If you're like most companies, these two things, sales capabilities tracking and coaching data, are missing from the reports that you use today. And here's another one I'm guessing you don't have. Performance correlation, which are actually a set of metrics that tie these things all together. Sales capabilities, coaching effectiveness, and revenue performance. We call this the human side of sales acceleration. Executives love this, and frankly, your business requires it. One of the biggest drivers for this is the millions that you're spending, not only to build your sales funnel, but also to develop your reps to effectively win deals. Without this metric, there's no way to tie your enablement investments to revenue. This is the reason we have Salesforce in the first place. There's one thing you will discover immediately in measuring enablement to revenue, and that is that top performers have one thing in common. They're highly proficient in all aspects of their jobs. As you can see, we're not just talking about selling skills. Alignment with KPIs means that in a given year, focus may just be on one component of a representative's role, such as their grasp of your new sales methodology or product or may cover multiple aspects to include things like prospecting, competitors, and compliance. 
A 2015 MHI research study also shows that top performers are much better at adapting to changing market dynamics. They are very good at applying client-specific context throughout the sales cycle. This is achieved in large part because their companies foster a culture where sales development is valued, making sure that every rep knows that taking the time to learn and grow is completely encouraged and it's supported. And the results of this are worth it. Companies that have embraced these metrics are seeing great returns. For one U.S.-based company, they were able to increase the success of their middle performers and positively impact other things like turnover, which can have a huge impact on revenue growth, just by making their reps more confident and productive. Either way, there's a simple way to correlate this, and it starts with your CRM system. Like this example, you might bring in capabilities data such as proficiency scores in a particular skill or area of expertise. You can bring in other data too, like coaching actions or team scores. By simply correlating that with the activity and sales performance data in your CRM system, you can have a full view of both past and predictive outcomes. By doing this, you'd be able to see pretty quickly if your rep with the biggest pipeline also has the weakest discovery skills. Knowing that lets you both assess forecast accuracy, but also take action before it's too late. This is effectively moving the middle. I hope this session has inspired a few new ideas for taking your sales analytics to the next level. Just remember these things and you'll be on your way to addressing the human side of sales acceleration. First, monitor what your reps know. Often managers don't know where to begin to guide their sales reps. As we discussed, performance against quota is a backward-looking measure of how well sales reps will, report, will perform in front of clients. To effectively monitor and manage reps, sales managers need a granular understanding of exactly what reps know and how confidently they can apply it. Second, personalize your coaching to build confidence as well as proficiency. More confident reps sell better, but sometimes the most confident reps may not be those with the greatest domain expertise. Imagine the benefits to a sales manager of being able to see at a glance the reps who are struggling to understand a specific topic or skill. Managers can proactively address these things during the small amount of time they have together, turning those average sales reps into top performers. Lastly, correlate insights to sales performance. Technology makes it possible to gather data and readily document what individuals know. Organizations can use this data to gauge how well they are prepared um, at applying what they know in your selling environment. Then, through the use of predictive analytics, teams can correlate metrics of sales rep capabilities, including engagement, performance, and proficiency, to actual business results. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the summit and feel free to contact us directly if you have any questions on anything we've covered today.